you're on a busy bus and you're on the phone to your doctor speaking about your rectal exam. Oh my god! My, my recent exam, yep. Yeah. yeah, what, yep. Yeah. What type of exam? It. No, you didn't catch that. I'm on the phone! Can you please mind your own personal space? <sighs> rectal exam. Oh, for crying out loud, rectal exam! You heard that? No? Oh, okay. Rectal examination, yes. Everyone goes through it. Don't look at me like I'm disgusting. You're serenading the laugh of your life, Charlie, who's a dolphin. I'm calling my grandmother Margaret to bitch about uh, my other grandmother Phyllis. Then you realize, and then I realize that I'm calling Phyllis. Okay. Hi, Grandma Margaret. Hey, it's nice to hear from you. Listen, uh, I'm calling about Phyllis. You know my other grandma. So I'm staying over at their house lately, and. Uh, my grandpa and her have lately just been really into it. But I'm telling you... Faster! 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 And she's like, hey, and I'm freaking out! Wait, hold on. Uh... Ha-ha! <laughs> Phyllis! Hey, great to hear from you. I'll be right upstairs for dinner. You and Grandpa, go at it! You've gone to prison for stalking Mary Berry and you were trying to fit in with a group of hardened criminals. How do I do that? <clears throat> yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's like sitting in a tree outside her window and like, you know, taking some snaps while she was... eating buttercream out of a bowl. Licking her fingers. And then like... Paul Hollywood walked in and I was like... The hell? That's my! That's my bitch! Shit, too many notes. So I'm like, I'm like totally hard, so like, don't mess with me or anything. Also, I make a really good Victoria sponge, just if anyone's interested. You are the pig normal. <laughs> I don't even have to read what it was about, oh Jesus. And you have to explain what really happened with David Cameron. F my life. Well, I was just in the farm, and then. It was, it was a campaign. I think it was the it was the don't know vote no campaign, yeah. And there he was. The receding hairline, the pompous attitude, the eaten education. I was a goner. He looked at me, he held out his hand, and it was a handful of slop. I was captivated. I told me he loved me. But then everything changed. Everything changed once the no vote came through. He didn't need me anymore. He didn't need me for support. No, what did I get? One passionate night. One passionate night where he told me he loved me. And then the no vote came through and he didn't need support anymore. He didn't need me. He went back on all of his promises. And now it's all over the news. And my mother just sold me and my dad's a burger. And I don't know what to do anymore. You're being interviewed before your audition on X Factor and you're doing a sob story on your life. But nothing bad has happened to you. Great. When I was, uh, was four, my mum and dad left me when I went to school. So, like, I've still got the scars of, like, in there. It was really... <clears throat> So, when I was 12, my dog got ran over by my little sister on our tricycle. It just it really upset. <laughs> Sometimes I, I, I cry about, like, like, films. She, she always loved to hear me sing and now she's in a coma, she can't even hear me. And it's just so sad. I find it really hard to get over change. So that maybe if she hears me sing, she'll wake up. <sighs> and sometimes, speaking of change, I just, um, I can't afford things because I've left money at home. So, 
it's really hard sometimes. But I really want to win. I really want to win and I think I can. I really hope I can. Just for fun. As... As... 